So let me tell you why I'm making this video. There's a shortcut that I take every day to get from the house to the shop. And on this shortcut, there's an L-shaped street. So as you're coming up the street, you're staring directly at the front of a house, this house. And I make this trip several times a day, seven days a week, and I have for the last like year and a half since I moved into that shop. So you become very familiar with, with your, your path, you know, the one you take every day. And naturally, because as you're coming up the street, and this house is like, like, if you don't turn, you're driving into the front door of this house. I see the house all the time, and I've seen its occupants, I mean, frequently, very frequently. And uh, it's a family, and they have, a, they have a young daughter, about the same age as my, my grandkids. Six, seven, eight, like that. And I see them out there decorating for the holidays and so on and so forth. So like visually, they, they don't, they wouldn't know me from, from a hole in the world, but visually, like I know them because I see them. Okay. So the other day I'm, I'm on my way, I'm taking that, that road. And, uh, I noticed that there's a black Tesla parked in the driveway. I'm like, oh, I got a Tesla. Didn't think anything of it. Go to the shop on my way back to the house. Now I'm coming up the street. And I, I get right to like literally the front of their house, like I'm nose to nose with this Tesla. And as, as I'm making the turn, I see that the, the Tesla is like backed right up against the garage door in front of the house. And they've got an extension cord going to it. And all of a sudden, my paternal protective instincts all kicked in. Because like I said, visually, I see them out there. And I see them with their daughter. And I'm like, like, so, like, I guess as they're visually familiar to me. And I'm like, do these people not know how dangerous that is? Now, I, I may be over-exaggerating. I may be over-exaggerating. But again, you see, like, paternal protective instincts tend to make somebody exaggerate. And then I really started to think about it. And I'm like, you know, they, they must be, they have to be, as most people are, unaware of how extreme extremely dangerous an EV parked in a residential or very very close to a residential house building is EVs will spontaneously combust it doesn't happen to all of them it doesn't happen every day although it happens more and more frequently EVs still only make up a very tiny percentage of of the vehicles on the road but they make up a majority of the spectacular vehicle explosion videos. It happens often enough that it, do a search, do a, do a video search on EV fire, and there's no shortage of them. Now, if, it, oddly enough, if you search, if you do like a just just a regular you know Google search on EV fires, all of the front, all of the first hits, all of the, the main hits, are all about oh how it's so rare. One site is saying, oh, there's only been 14 known cases. Well, the 14 known cases are actually vapor explosions, which, which is a whole different thing. But they make it sound like, oh, there's only been 14 EV explosions in, in the history of EVs. There's more videos than that. There's, there's 14 videos of electric scooters catching fire. I mean, it's a problem. It's a problem. The, the average person, I don't think, if these people were aware, right, of the potential the explosive potential of an EV parked that close to their front door or even in the garage. Because most people who buy EVs, yeah, well, I'll just pull this thing in my garage and I'll plug it in and go to sleep. And okay, great, you know, odds are 99.999% that you're gonna be just fine, okay? But it's that 0001% where this thing spontaneously combusts. No warning. You don't have to have an accident. You don't have to have, you know, a, a problem, an upset. There's, they just go. Why do they go? I don't know. I'm not a, a, a lithium ion battery expert. I don't know. But what I do know is that when they go off, man, do they go off. Have you seen the video of the bus? If you haven't seen this, if you've got kids, right, and you haven't seen this, you need to watch this video. Search it right now. Watch this video. There's a bus, it's a city bus. It's parked at the curb. Right? It's just sitting there minding his own business. It's not even being charged. Nothing. Okay? 
there's a whisper smoke and then pow, this thing goes off like a roman candle it's insane what if instead of parked at the curb just sitting there this thing was going down the road at 40 miles an hour 50 miles an hour loaded with passengers kids what if it was a school bus okay if you watch that video watch how quickly and how violently that thing goes off before a driver could even react or get that thing stopped it's in it's it, everybody inside is done they're done okay how can somebody own one of these things own a lithium-ion powered vehicle and not be aware of the danger of it spontaneously combusting much less exploding while it's being charged there's videos all over the place in in parking garages these are just the ones that are caught on video of evs without having an accident without, without you know, just and it's violent now yeah i know internal combustion gasoline is flammable yes obviously we know that but gasoline cannot spontaneously combust it does not spontaneously combust if you are going to have a fire with a gasoline powered car it's going to be after an accident it's going to be after some sort of upset and generally speaking those fires are i mean there's no there's no such thing as a safe fire but they're not that crazy there'll be an initial flash woof as all of the vapors light off right and then for the most part it's kind of tame you can get away from it when an EV goes off, these things are, it's a torch. It's like a Roman candle. They go off with the fury of a thousand suns, right? And if you've got this thing in your house, you've got this thing in your garage, or if you've got this thing parked way up close to your house, there's a good chance you're done. Actually, in India now, evidently India is banning these electric scooters or, or the indoor charging of electric scooters because people are dying. They're, scooters are obviously much more popular in India than they, than they are here in the U.S. So they're more common. But people die. There are people dying. You know, their scooter is just, you're asleep, you've got this thing charged, and before you can react, before you can wake up, it has gone off, right? Bad, bad stuff. People need to be aware of this stuff. Now, I'm not saying don't have an EV. Oh no, EVs are terrible. No, EVs are okay. If you choose to drive an EV, drive an EV, right? But you have to be aware of these things. Here's the thing, with all of the government push for EVs, with all of the corporate push for EVs, with all of these billions and billions and billions of dollars that are being spent to push the EV thing, shouldn't they also be pushing the safety aspect of it? Shouldn't there be, let's say, a subsidy? Let's just say, for example, you're going to buy an EV. Should there not be a subsidy of some sort, let's say, so that the homeowner can fit their house with an automatic sprinkler system like you'd have in a commercial area? So if you are asleep, this thing decides it's going to go off because that's it. They go off just like that. They just, pff, no rhyme or reason, okay? If while you're asleep, your family's asleep, this thing decides to go off, you at least have a fighting chance. I mean, I don't even know what the vapors would do, you know, the, the fumes coming off of this thing, but that's besides the point. At least you have a fighting chance to get out of your house because it's not a normal fire. It's not a normal gasoline fire. Like for instance, garages are constructed out of, out of special sheetrock, thicker sheetrock, to contain a fire for a long enough period of time for you to get out, right? But with the intensity of a lithium ion fire, how effective is that built-in fireproofing? How effective is it? And if you've got a case like, for instance, the people with the Tesla that they pass all the time, the house is aluminum siding. You know, it's got, it, it, like, if that thing had gone off where it is, let's just say at night while everybody is sleeping, no, the front of the house would have been engulfed in flames before anybody knew what was going on. It happens that fast. And like I said, don't take my word for it. Look at the videos of these things. Maybe the governments, maybe local fire marshals should all start looking into this because if EVs do catch on, if they do gain the traction that everybody seems to be shoving, like in my, in my opinion, it's premature technology. But if the powers that be insist on shoving these things into circulation, shouldn't there also be regulations regarding safety, fire safety? Right? So if you do have an EV or you do know somebody with an EV, right? 
use your head before you park. If you're gonna if you're gonna charge it in your garage, don't don't charge it in your garage. Watch videos of EVs being charged in parking garages and whatnot. Right? Don't do it in your house. If you're gonna charge your EV in the driveway, fine, that's the place to charge it. But charge it far enough away from the front of the house so that it's not going to just immediately catch the house on fire. Just bring it to the end of the driveway, as far, as far, as far enough away from other flammable things as you can get it. Just common sense, common sense. It, there doesn't seem to be a lot of it, right? And I know I'm not overreacting. And I, I wanted to go. I wanted to go knock on their door, right? I wanted to tell them, "Hey, hey, listen. You don't know who I am, right? But I pass your, your I pass your house every day, right? I see you out there taking putting Halloween decorations with your with your daughter and everything. It's like I think it's so beautiful. But you know, you that's dangerous. What you're doing is dangerous. I I don't want I, I don't want to be that guy. They're like, who the hell is this guy? Why is he telling me that my car is dangerous, right? If you happen to live in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, in the Franklin Road. Uh, area and you know somebody with a black Tesla right? and you see this you may you may want to let them see this video I'm not gonna knock on that door so uh, that's what are you gonna say what are you gonna do right the, the, the world is bent on pushing this EV thing right uh, let's use some common sense and maybe take some precautions to make sure that like you know Watch the videos. Watch these videos. Look at these videos and see how insane these fires are. And then there's the fire departments too. You realize it takes thousands of gallons to every one of these fires. It takes thousands of gallons of water to put them out. You get the whole West Coast having like water crises. Lake Mead is like is like a puddle, right? And and like they're pushing right these EVs. It takes thousands of gallons of water to put out a freaking EV fire. And then on top of that, once they're out, they can reignite at any time. Time. They have special EV containment units. These things are just a tiny fraction of the cars that are on the road right now. What if there were half the cars on the road? How many special containment structures are fire departments going to need to put these? Th I don't want to keep ranting. You get the idea. I'll see you tomorrow.